Yeah, recipes of note. They played, Timothy and Michelle played a beautiful concert. And I was very moved by all of the pieces, really. And at the end, because I was watching alone, I stood up and I clapped. And I sort of looked around and I thought, where is everybody? <laughs> Experience. And I'm wondering how audiences now are, are going to relate more close. You know how uh, audience, we have this audience experience where we're all there together. And even at the end of something profound, there's that moment when nobody claps. Mm -hmm. You must, the performer, feel terrific when that happens. <laughs> we're all taking our breath and then everybody claps and yeah. stands and all. So for the performer, there's sort of a two-way thing. Let's talk about the performer and the audience, the difference that this is making and how maybe is there something we can do to make it a little more personal is the word mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. like you're part of an audience. That's not a small question, Adrian. But yeah. yeah, no, <laughs> I, that's... I, I'm sort of curious about it because I had a, just a very different experience. I wanted to go and shake their hand and say that was really nice and all that. So let's expand on that, okay? I laugh when you said you were clapping because you're right. I mean, there's, there's an element where if you're clapping to yourself and nobody can hear it, what, what's the point? Is there a way that we can funnel it somewhere else? And we've seen people put up these emojis that are like, <laughs> <laughs> cartoon things and with several like several of them lined up in a row and there's a visual aspect of it yeah. we broadcast live on youtube and on facebook simultaneously as we did last tuesday on youtube we over to the right you can click and then you can go over to a chat box and you'll see several of us chatting and, and talking and um and you can speak with um you know, me and Christine were always we're always manning on that, and we have several different community members there, and that's the kind of chatter that doesn't bother other people. You know, if you're going to be in a concert hall and someone whispers, <laughs> "What did he say?" <laughs> you know, or, <laughs> or "What movement are we on?" You know, and it always bothers some people. Or crinkling, crinkling of programs. That's one advantage of the digital space that you can actually For just sure. talk to one another. And nobody, and if it's in the chat box, they want to be reading something anyway, they, or they might have a question that's similar to the friends. It doesn't bother anybody if they did so. It doesn't make any noise. I think a part of it is the uncertainty of it, the uncertainty yeah. of how long. I think that we, we're largely over the fact, I mean, when, when, when the phonograph came out, a lot of people wrote, this is the death of classical music or yeah. death of music in the industry. When the CD came out, same thing. Uh, and and maybe even the age of live stream, we have some people that I think, oh, this is the death of everything. Um, I think that given the uncertainty, it puts into focus the idea that, is this gonna substitute it completely? And I don't think that you and I are advocating for that at all. The CD still has an incredible amount of quality. And we, yeah. we, we now that it's a non-threat, nobody has problems listening to recordings and think, and, and enjoying them with a glass of wine, you know, in, yeah. in their home. Well, it's sort of in the meantime, <laughs> this yes. is what we're doing. There's restaurants that are uh, sharing the recipes, which could have been secret recipes before. Yeah. And, and people might say, oh my goodness, like if you do that, they'll never come to the restaurant. Yeah. You actually, you actually have this, this greater appreciation of how the dish comes together. Yeah. And so in this way, you might, you might really want to see how the master does it, right? Yeah. It, it, listening to the CDs has brought about a certain thing where like, oh, there's different interpretations. It actually is a very fixed mindset to say, well, if you give it to them, then they'll never come by saying that if they can, if they can own a slice of it, they've owned it completely. Well, I think, you know, it brings back when the CDs, uh, you know, were so available, we, mm -hmm. this came out and everybody was listening and, of course, if we heard a version of a quartet by, you know, um, <clears throat> the St. Lawrence, we'd think, you know, well, that's, you know, and then go to a concert with somebody else and they did it differently. Some people would criticize that and say, well, I don't, 
you know, uh, St. Lawrence did it this way. Uh, I don't like this. Right. Well, that, that's good because you were listening. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, good. don't take it as the, you know, don't take one version as the be all end all, you yeah. know. You don't go when you're playing to every performance to play it the same, do you? I wouldn't imagine you'd be, you'd be doing it that way. There's always something that you would think, oh, I'm going to add a little sugar here. I'm going <laughs> to add a little vinegar here. I'm going to add, you know, all these ingredients into your performance. There is live performance and there's CDs. They all have a place in, right. in music. And we'll get used to listening to online music. Yeah. Well, you know, in the next century, we'll, we'll say, they will say, not me. <laughs> they will say, <clears throat> oh, this was the COVID period from 2020 to whatever it is. Yeah. This is the COVID period when they were doing all this, referring yeah. to our hit period of music. So what we're talking about, Adrian, how do, you, how do you feel as a performer? When you, when you finish a piece, mm -hmm. doesn't it give you some juice to have everybody clap and that they like it. I mean, you know they like it. Jim oh, should be. It's Jim. Is it? It's 11. <laughs> it's 11. It's right on time. <laughs> exactly as we thought. Hey, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi. Hey, <laughs> you look smart, Jim. Thank you. You do too. You look fantastic. Thank you. Your shirt's pretty nice. Oh, thanks. It's my Zoom shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's right there's a whole new wardrobe thought now isn't exactly. there <laughs> yeah. i never thought about that i must get out there and do my part well when it started i thought i, I don't you know i, I don't want to get on there in my t-shirt so you know yeah, I, I, I would get it. shirts out adrian of course came onto our our program advisory committee with shirt and tie we were very impressed <laughs> <laughs> and he's got his tie today I got my tie <laughs> You're looking hey, very dapper. Awesome. Hey, Leslie. <laughs> oh, he's pretty good. It's 1101. Yeah. Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Where are you? Oh, there. Leslie, are, are you going to be able to put on your video? Um, you mean like that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Leslie. Hey, June. How you doing? Great, thanks. Good. Hey, June. Oh, it's so good to see Hi, you. Hey, Leslie. I'll be seeing you tomorrow. <laughs> you will indeed. Yeah. Are you Are playing? You? We're golfing. Yeah. Golfing. Oh, golfing. <laughs> yeah, oh. Something really important. <laughs> Are you golfing together now? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah we're we're a duo golf team. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think you were able to golf together in the previous oh, life. Well, you know, it's physically distance. We rent carts, we stay apart. It's very easy. It actually it's very easy to do outdoors. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot safer than rehearsing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to uh, ask you, uh, uh, Jim and Leslie, you know, um, we've known each other the very long time. It's, it's wonderful how that has happened, hasn't it? I mean, we've Absolutely. stayed friends for, I can't remember when you first, it was the second season, wasn't it, that you came out? I think so. 1980. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's lovely. And digitally like this, we can, you know, visit. So, you know, I know you do a lot of teaching um, and, uh, and performing. How do you guys feel about this um, digital performing? Is it, uh, do you like this idea that we're coming to? I mean, is it something that all concert presenters are, and musicians are going to be doing? Are they going to be presenting their playing digitally? I think everything is very new. And I think um, what we've all, we're responding in any way we can. Thank God we have technology. The, um, the teaching, I mean, as we all did, we pivoted in mid-March, every, every organization, every person. But as schools, uh, we pivoted, and as one of my friends who's a teacher uh, said, we built the airplane as we took off from the runway. But it, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, for me, and I, I'm sure I, I haven't really talked at length with Leslie about it teaching wise, but I was stunned at what we got done and I, I, on teaching. I had no idea you could get that much done. I definitely used YouTube as an aid. I, I had uh, students send me the night before a run through of their, the piece that we would do in a lesson, and I would listen to it with really good headphones, really good quality, 
And that was, in a sense, re that replaced running the piece in the studio the next day. But then I really knew the piece. I knew what the lesson was going to be. And then Zoom, or for whatever lacks there were in, in Zoom, it, it was easy. So the same with performing. I mean, it's, it's um, given, the, given the alternative, I'll, I'll take some. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then let's see where it goes. I mean, I don't know where it will go. We'll see. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think that uh, the, the only caveat uh, for me is that it must never, at this point in our technology, be uh, used or even we should never be tempted to use it as a substitute uh, or that it's going to be the new normal uh, until the technology is such, until somebody invents a Star Trek holodeck, then, then, then we can do it. But, uh, but right now, uh, it, it's, it's a great substitute. It's perfectly usable. And it doesn't cost the student any more or less. Well, Leslie, um, can I, can I ask you, how do you feel about performing? Supposing you and Jim did a live concert and, you know, <clears throat> there's no clapping at the end. There's no actual, no energy from an audience that you're used to. Well, how, how does that sit with you? Well, I think we could use canned laughter. You know, that would be a... <laughs> 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 How about can't you mean canned applause as well, right? Yeah. I, I got, yeah, exactly. Given the alternative? Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> but, you know, but it is what it, it is what it is. It's not there's nothing like being in a hall of whatever size and feeling the communication that you get back from a from a group of people from the minute you start to play. So will your playing be different? Do you think that juice from the audience is really a crucial part of your performance or are you going to be able to do it as well, well without that? You go ahead. The one thing before I, let's see, before I, uh, what I would, the one thing I would say is we've done a lot of recordings and really it's a lot like recording. I mean, you're really, you know, you're recording and you're saying to yourself as you record, as you get used to this process, at first it's, it's all, not intimidating, but it's, Kind of claustrophobic on and then as you get used to it you're really playing as, as thinking to yourself you've heard uh cds you've heard recording you're saying this is going to be heard so it becomes in a sense a real performance um even though there's not someone there so and i think this is very similar yeah mm -hmm. and even if it wouldn't even if it's uh, it's it's different in some ways from recording uh, uh, jim's right i mean we you know, we, we play full out when we, we don't have an audience there and it's just a microphone. Yeah. I remember the first time I did uh, my first live performance and getting nervous. And then the first recording and getting nervous. And that, that was my, my first entry point of similarity. And yeah. one, of the, one of the elements that I felt was so wonderful about hearing uh, from you both about the pre-recorded lesson, that's... That's incredible, because like once you put on that microphone, I imagine that I would be more prepared for my lesson uh, than if I were just to walk into the studio. Do you, have you found that the quality of that? Absolutely, and our student, that's right, absolutely. And our students have said, my students anyway have said that. I mean, suddenly they've got to get a piece, I mean, really ready, and they are, they're, they're more prepared. To Adrian about the microphone. Um, yeah, I was nervous in front of a, a, the audience, you know, for a lot of the time. Uh, the first time I played in front of a microphone, I was terrified. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, of course, until somebody, I forget who it was, our, our producer, was it Anton? Yeah, I think it was Anton Kwiatkowski. He said, Leslie, the tape, this is tape of the time, the tape is actually the cheapest part of this process. So, you, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter how much we use, you know. So if you mess up, we'll do it again. So suddenly it was, it was a lot easier. Great. Well, you know what? This might, this is a good pause for something, and I wonder if you're you're both okay with this. And uh, we have a game set up, and this game where if you could imagine the classic game shows, we we put one of you in a sound booth, right? And so that'll be our waiting room here. So for about just three to four minutes, I'd ask one of you to be outside the conversation, and then I'll invite you right back in. Is that all right? And then we'll do that with three. No. <laughs> Are you not okay with that, Jim? I'm totally fine. I was just horsing around. Totally. <laughs> Who would like to go? You want me to leave? I'll leave.
Okay, you'll leave first. It's just three, four minutes. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you, Jim. I'll, I'll put you. Uh, I'll put you in a waiting room. Yes. So this is a little thing. Okay, and it's just a few questions, and um, and so uh, you know, answer candidly. Answer how you, however you like, and we will. Um, we're going to ask Jim the same questions. This is, if you had a day off, you would rather be a golfing two, practicing, three, cooking, or four, something else? All of the above. All of the above. Great. No. What if you had to choose one? Uh, golfing. Okay, great. Okay, we have golfing. And punctuality. On the scale, where would you put yourself? Military grade punctuality? Meh, I don't know, however the windy, or Tids Optimist, which is uh, a, a wonderful Swedish word I just learned, which is, it actually stands for time optimism, always feeling you have more time. <laughs> uh, it depends on what for. Uh-huh, right. Let's say a, a, not a concert, I know you've never been. Um, rehearsals, yeah, same thing. Yeah, no, same with, uh, so not, for, you're not talking about concerts or rehearsals. No, not concerts, just like, in general, like a coffee. Meh. Meh, okay, perfect. And your stance on facial hair. Pagonophile, love beards, admire beards. Haven't checked whether you have a beard or not. Gillette man. I think beards should be illegal. <laughs> beards should be illegal? <laughs> <laughs> My stance on facial hair. I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, Leslie, because I know you've had you've had a variety of different um, um, of different looks. You you haven't always had a beard, right? You you. No, I grew a mustache in the late seventies. Oh, cool. uh, you have I, a picture of that? Mm, yeah, some of our <laughs> old recordings. Okay. Yeah, Jim, Jim had a mustache too. So, we got it. Uh, we got to yeah. get our hands on that. Yeah, well, some of the, I think the Arensky recording. Okay. Uh, has that, uh, okay. The, the, the cover. Uh, but yeah, I've had, and then I grew a beard shortly after my daughter was born. Okay. It was like in the 90s. Uh, general state of organization. Uh, let me show you my flow chart. In the middle of, I'm so-so. And then on the other side, creative chaos. Absolutely creative chaos. Absolutely creative chaos. <laughs> Besides the piano, what's your favorite instrument? Like the vocal instrument, guitar, percussion, other? Hmm. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, let me, I haven't thought of that. My favorite instrument. If you're talking about the whole gamut, I would have to say percussion. Percussion. Great, like you, you, you love like I love. I always wanted to clang those cymbals, like on the Muppet Show. I was going to say my crown and glory was at a music camp I taught at in the mid seventies, and I got to play the crash cymbals in O Canada. Great, <laughs> absolutely made my decade. <laughs> <laughs> made your decade, love it. Okay, Leslie, thank you. Those are the, the very short, and then I'll ask you. I'll, I'll put you in the sound booth. I'll, I'll invite Jim back. So they're perfect. I'm um, here. All right, Leslie, I'll put you in the sound booth, okay? Thank you. All right. Great. This is fun. All right. So, this is fun. I like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like it already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jim. So, we just, uh, Leslie just went through these as well. Stock questions. All right. And uh, yeah. this is our first one. Okay. If you had a day off, you would rather be golfing, practicing, Cooking or something else? Well, it's either golfing or tennis. Ah, okay. So tennis, between the two? Tennis. Okay, okay, great. Punctuality, military grade, meh, or tids optimist? Are you talking about me, uh, me or Leslie? You. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> military grade. Ah, okay, 
Awesome. <laughs> Your stance on facial hair. You're a pagonophile, lover, and admirer of beards. You haven't checked whether you are and what state of uh, facial hair you're in. You're a Gillette man. In terms of myself? Yes. Uh, uh, sort of somewhere between probably closer to Gillette man that to haven't checked, but I would say to you that I've, I've covered that entire spectrum. Uh-huh. So at this point, I mean, at this point, I'm a Yule Brenner, Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Really, really <laughs> want pictures because um, that's the awesome. <laughs> General state of organization. Let me show you my flow chart. I'm so-so, creative chaos. Well, y you know that people come into my office and say, I cannot believe your desk is, where is everything? So I would say that I'm extremely organized. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's driven by fear. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's just so much, you know, uh, that, that goes through my life that I, I just, I have to stay on it. So I do. June, a quick story. Do you know that one time, I, this was back in the day with the Blackberries, and I, and I learned this new thing that if you just pinch the screen, it, it, it will filter out all uh, read messages and unread messages, right? And it was a very cool thing. So I showed Barry. I said, Barry, hey, check this out. I pinched the screen. And as the audience knows, Barry uh, works with Jim. He's the associate dean. Um, and uh, uh, James and Anderson is the dean. We call James, uh, we call Jim, Jimmy Dean. We love it. Um, <laughs> The reason why he's Jimmy Dean is when we pinched the screen, June, uh, you know, I had like maybe 477 unread messages or something. Barry had like 20, 20 unread messages. And then when we showed Jimmy, he said, Jim, show me your Blackberry. And we pinched it and it was like zero unread messages. He responded to everyone. <laughs> this, yeah, that, it, like, Barry and I just looked at it. Well, that's why, that's, that's Jimmy Dean. <laughs> Last question, Jim. Yeah. Besides the piano, what's your favorite instrument? Vocal. Vocal? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Terrific. Okay. So we'll get Leslie back in here and we'll we'll uh we'll we'll go we'll go through this. It's it's actually kind of funny because um the other person now guesses what the other person would have chosen. Okay. Oh <laughs> a, a real a true yeah. test. <laughs> okay, so this is the first question again. If you had a day off, what do you think the other would have said? So, uh, Leslie, you first. What do you think Jim said to this question? What are the answers? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, golfing. Yeah, he said golfing. But if he had an alternate, he, if, if he had an other as well, he said, well, it's either golfing or what would the other one be? Playing tennis. Oh, <laughs> amazing. Good job. <laughs> yeah, he went for that. He went for that. Yeah. Punctuality. Okay, Jim, what do you think uh, Leslie said? You're talking about Leslie about himself, right? That's right. <laughs> not, not to do with practicing or, or, or concerts or stuff like that. I mean, it's getting qualified already. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking, Jim, I, we're talking about a coffee. Like, you know, something that's, that's fairly casual. Like you're meeting up with a friend. Meh. meh. Wow. Exactly. And Leslie, what do you think Jim would have said? Military grade. <laughs> <laughs> you notice the disdain in his voice when he said that? <laughs> two of, June, isn't this amazing? The two of them are like, right, they know each other so well. They do. Okay. <laughs> it's on facial hair. So Leslie, what do you think Jim said on this one? Haven't checked. Yeah, Jim. Jim said, "What did Jim? What did you say, Jim?" He said, "You're halfway." Between. I said, "Yeah, halfway between haven't checked the, I, and Gillette Man." But the truth is, I'm probably closer to Gillette Man because it's Jean Luc Picard. But I've done everything up there. <laughs> yeah. mean, I've, done, I've done everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, can Jim, you have what, a mustache? Yeah. Did you, Leslie, did you just bring up the mustache? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we got to see had, both of you in those. I had mustache sideburns into mustache. You know, I've done the whole bit. Wow, and it wasn't November. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, well, I remember when Jim had the mustache and yeah. sideburns. Oh, and I grew the beard. I grew the beard after Becky was. Oh, so I think I might have. Did I have the beard then, June? I don't think so. At some point, like uh, some sort of a beard. You went through the variations, like Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jim, what do you think Leslie said? Uh, about his stance on facial chair, hair. Um, some of you haven't checked in further more hair. <laughs> Well, Leslie said that beards should be illegal, and he said it was. Yeah, that's, that's what I was my first thing. <laughs> and general state of organization, uh, Leslie. What do you think Jim said about me? About himself. Oh, uh, let me show you my flow chart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's been. He, he's pretty. He's pretty awesome. It's been. It's I've been. Uh, he's been an aspiration for me. And uh, Jim, what do you think Leslie said? Um, I think he said, I'm so-so as he stared at creative chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Jim, Leslie fully invested in creative chaos. Totally. Oh, good. He messed up. <laughs> I wasn't sure if he messed up. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> and for the final question, um, Jim, what do you think Leslie chose as his favorite instrument besides the piano? Violin. Oh. Now, Leslie, do you like the violin? Love the violin. Love the I, hated, violin. I hated playing it. My daughter <laughs> got a better sound after one week than I did after four years. <laughs> That's the only reason I said violin is I knew that he played it as, as a kid. That's right. But Leslie did have a good experience playing one of these other instruments. Go ahead, Leslie. Why don't you share with Jim? Yeah, when I, I think I, you might, I've told you this, maybe, or you heard me tell it, but when I was in a music camp in the 70s, I got to play the crash cymbals in O Canada. Oh, yeah, for sure. That was my crown and glory. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, Wigmore Hall, eh, whatever. But playing yeah. the crash cymbals, I'll tell you. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was power. <laughs> That's great. Leslie, yeah. what do you think Jim said? Percussion. And Jim, what did you say? Well, I said vocal. But the reason Leslie's saying percussion is he, even as he, it, it, which is that when I was growing up, I played the drums until grade nine. I played all percussion and I was convinced that that's what I wanted to do in my life. And we would have these scenarios where people would meet my, me with my mother and say, and they would say to me, what are you going to do when you grow up? And I would say, I'm going to be a drummer. As my mother said, he's going to be a pianist. <laughs> 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 and then I, uh, I just, in grade 10, I went to a school that didn't have a band um, and the percussion went behind. I loved playing percussion as a kid. I loved it. So Leslie was dead on actually with that answer. Now I just, I mean, I love, I, I love opera. I love vocal music. I think always as pianists, what we should be trying to do is playing like singers. So that's why. I, I agree. I I agree with that, actually. And the, re the only reason I didn't pick vocal is because I have a voice that frightens animals. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the reasons why we wanted to, to do this uh, was that uh, June was sharing with me uh, in great admiration how the two of you uh, speak with one another with an incredible familiarity, but with respect. And from the outside, um, we know that there are unifying values that have, have really spoken to the longevity and the incredible success, the achievement, the, the complete distinction of an Addison and Kenton. Uh, and yet from the outside, we see so many opposites, right? So we wanted to, in a fun way, kind of highlight that. And June had uh, this wonderful question, which June, I hope you don't mind if I just, uh, you, you should follow up, but this yeah. is June she said she was basically saying with all of these differences right what is the secret what is the magic sauce that kept Ignatius and Kim together for so many years decades and 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 you're playing to this day and what is what is at the center of that well I've got two things I think uh artistically it's that uh I'm not going to be disingenuous and say that an artist does not have an element of an ego. I mean, you have to if you're going to if you're going to be on stage in front of a lot of people, you've got to have to be very secure. Uh, but um, ultimately, the arbiter for us has always been the music. 
it's never been our personal win or anything and we we have the same musical values and artistic values okay so from an artistic standpoint i think that's it in spite of our differences as pianists uh, which actually make it stronger uh, uh, but the uh, the core artistic values are the same. Uh, the the second thing is the personal values is that we both have a sense of humor. And, uh, I mean, without that, you can't. Yeah, you, know, you know, you you just you need that uh, with uh, just to get through stuff because there are always crises. Okay, and the more often not uh, not of your own making, and uh, and they can they can be stressful. But that's what's gotten us uh, personally a lot through it. And uh, we we were friends before we became a duo. I mean, we became best friends uh, way before the, the fact that we were a duo. So that was. Uh... Well, I have. I mean, first of all, I would say this. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I couldn't resist. It. Sorry, I was trying to be serious. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my two answers are actually very similar to Leslie's. The first answer is, is that we both love making music. Um, we've never done it for the money. Um, and, yeah, I, saw, I saw the clip you had with Barry when Miss Barry was so hysterical about coming on and, and saying they pay us a fee to do this. Because I, I mean, literally, I mean, I, I said to Leslie, yeah, Many, I cannot believe they are paying us to do this. And we are both exactly the same. We love making music and, and um, always have. And that's, that's why we do what we do. And I think, you know, that's, that's um, it's interesting. You get, I did another interview earlier in the week and someone was asking about careers in music and all. And, and people just are completely in it for the, or they perceive it for the wrong reasons. I mean, the only reason you should be in it is you just, can't live without it and you love making music and we are both like that um and the second thing everything's less easy but too but the second thing is absolutely in terms of uh, the personal relationship over a period of 40 odd years we have we each have a great sense of humor we both love to laugh leslie is absolutely crazy as a bed bug more than you will ever know from this interview what? I mean, he, he's a lunatic he has been he's done things that have maybe stopped the car because I'm laughing so hard driving that I'm going to crash the car if I don't stop. I mean, he's a lunatic. So it's like we're, you know, we, we that sense of humor. We're on the road a lot. We spend a lot of long hours. So we love to laugh. We both love to laugh. And, you know, Doc is very good. I know Adrian has another, I think he has a quiz for you. So. We have so many questions for you. And this way we could just spin this wheel and we do just have to answer, maybe each of you just take one of them. So this is a this is one of our features. It's called "We'll Ask You a Question," <laughs> and uh, we click we click the wheel, and then you just answer whichever one we have. So um, some of them are: What is your most harrowing musical experience? Uh, what was the last thing you ate? Those kinds of things, and we'll just see what you who would like to All right, spin that baby. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps you up? What at keeps you up at night? anything <laughs> and everything <laughs> i'm a very bad sleeper <laughs> that's the only answer i can give you um <laughs> uh, I, but i would say let me let me add one little thing which for every musician uh the musician dreams that i used to have the most traumatic one was sitting on a stage with an orchestra looking over at leslie to get see are you ready he's ready i look up at the conductor who's, who's looking over his shoulder and his baton comes up and I look at the score and I go, we don't play that concerto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, had that one. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Okay. And Leslie, I'll click one for you. Okay. What was the last thing you ate? You really want to know? <laughs> okay. About an hour ago, uh, buffalo mozzarella with anchovy and drizzle with really great olive oil. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Leslie, you know, I, I have to tell you, I, I saw some of your Facebook posts and uh, I learned a lot. I, I took a muffin tray and I tried to uh, bake some eggs, perfectly soft boiled eggs. Was a, that was, that's my wife, uh, Barbara. Uh, okay. she, she does that. She's the specialist at that. Yeah. Uh, I won't even go near it. She's great. Okay. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Well, both of you, thank you for taking this time and spending an hour with, with June and I. And I, I have to say, uh, we both were saying we can't wait to have you back in Vancouver with us. Uh, we don't know when that'll happen, obviously, uh, but it can't be too soon. Well, this has been really fun. Thank you, Adrian, for organizing it. June, it's great to see you. And it brings back a lot of, we've had amazing memories in our career in the, from your second season onward. And many times we've come out. So thanks for having us. It's been great yeah, seeing we, all of we you. Just, uh, we just, we have such a place in our heart for, for music in the morning. We really do. It's, uh, yeah. Well, thank you. It's, it's been a pleasure to see you this way. If we can't see you that way. <laughs> yes. yeah. Okay, Jim, I'll see you on the first tee tomorrow. <laughs> you will indeed. <laughs> Bye. Thanks so much. Hey, take care, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye.